Hi. What you're about to watch is a video in which my brain is doing things. I was in a strange headspace while making this video. Just follow me, work with me through it, watch till the end, you'll see where I'm going, okay? Just letting you know ahead of time. My Love, Mine All Mine is a song by an artist named Mitski. It is 2 minutes and 17 seconds long. It is the seventh track off her album, The Land is Inhospitable and So Are We. It is in the genres of alternative slash indie. Wikipedia describes it as slowcore, soft rock, Americana. As of this writing, it has 878,179,700 streams on Spotify. Several cover versions of the song have proliferated on social media, as well as usages as a TikTok sound. What does it mean? My Love, Mine All Mine is a song about the speaker's love. The speaker declares that her love is all hers. She offers for the moon to have it after she one day passes away. What does it mean? There can be many interpretations to the lyrics of a song. What does the artist herself say? In an interview with Genius, Mitski says, There is something about realizing that my love is mine. Nothing else is mine. Everything else goes away. Everything else, including myself, is going to deteriorate and go away. But as long as I hold on to my love, no one can take it from me. I can give so much love and it won't take away from me. Like, it's just this unlimited resource. Is love a resource? What about other human possessions? Human entitlements? Human bodies? What makes these possessions less than love? I am not able to process this amount of questions. I am not able to... I am not able to find the right fragrance for myself to use. I enjoy sweet fragrances, but if that sweetness isn't balanced, it doesn't offer the right amount of character. Thankfully, I've received some excellent options from Scentbird. Morning Wood, a clever fragrance by Boyfriend that makes riveting use of pink peppercorn, magnolia flower accord, iris accord, tonka bean accord, and a soft musk. Cherry Punk, a startling scent by Room 1015 which celebrates rebellion with mixes of cherry, saffron, Sichuan pepper, violet, and of course, leather. Radio Bombay, a smooth and sweet sandalwood smell from DS and Durga evoking the Bandra heat with coconut musk, cedar, peach, and radiant iris. And my favorite scent, the winner, Ocean Odyssey from Maison 21G in Paris, bringing out the essence of beach life with pink pepper, water fruit, salt, and minerals. I really like this scent. I miss the beach. Scentbird is a service allowing users to pick from 500 plus fragrances a month, from small brands to big names like Prada and Versace, making it a very convenient way for you to sample and eventually buy a full bottle, only after you establish the right one for you. You get to try your first monthly fragrance for only $8, and after that, a easy rate of $16.95 a month. The samples are the perfect amount, especially when you use these sparingly, allowing you to save a ton on perfume purchases that can often cost you upwards of $100 or hundreds of dollars. If you're interested in trying Scentbird, use my code ELLIOT55OFF to save 55% off of your first month of Scentbird. You can get the product for half of the price. That's just $8. What were we talking about? Ah, yes. Why write a song? What's the point? Today, you can create a song by merely pushing a few buttons. On the other hand, by hand, it can take so long to write a song. And then to play it, to perform it, to record it, to produce it, to mix and master it, that's going to take upwards of many hours and not to mention a ton of money. The time those things take can cut into so many other life choices and actions you have to take up. The skill learning, the traveling, the investing, the sleeping. And for what? What are the odds you're going to make any money back from your art, let alone enough to cover your investment or even profit? Why not invest in other things? Digital audio stations like FL Studio have long had features that can generate melodies with AI. The internet is riddled with apps that offer AI-generated lyrics, and AI-based marketing and social media services can handle the attention economy. Why not run a tight, high-efficiency, music-generating machine? You may get a bunch of unsuccessful results from what you produce, but you were likely going to have that outcome anyway. Have someone else do that work for you. Have something else do that work for you. Your life is hard enough. My Love, Mine All Mine is a song about what happens after life ends. 
It begins with a tribute to the moon and a request. When the speaker dies, she wishes for the moon to have her love. Moon, tell me if I could send up my heart to you. So when I die, which I must do, could it shine down here with you? What do such sentiments mean at the end of the day? For instance, is love not an emotion? A highly personal emotion, in fact, felt by individuals, unique and relative to each one? Nothing could be less giveable to the moon. The moon is an objectively extant natural satellite 30 times the diameter of Earth. You can see if DHL will allow you to send your heart to the moon when you die, but it'll cost you. And by nature of its not being a live heart anymore, it'll hardly have any emotions to give at all, much less love. Maybe love isn't an emotion after all. Psychiatrist M. Scott Peck defined love as the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. This is a crucial concept explored by Bell Hooks in her famous tome All About Love. In it, she explores how love is distorted as a concept, commodified and weaponized for abuses and oppressions normal to modern society. She challenges readers to put down their pretensions and detachments and face the essential nature of love. I noticed that all around me I heard testimony that lovelessness had become the order of the day. I feel our nations turning away from love as intensely as I felt love's abandonment in my girlhood. Turning away we risk moving into a wilderness of spirits so intense we may never find our way home again. I write of love to bear witness both to the danger in this movement and to call for a return to love. Redeemed and restored, love returns us to the promise of everlasting life. When we love, we can let our hearts speak. The problem is that love is scary and risky and exhausting. Life gives us enough of this, no? Hux writes that the practice of love offers no place of safety. We risk loss, hurt, pain. We risk being acted upon by forces outside of our control. This matches too closely with the utter ubiquity of loss, hurt, and pain, of incapacity, lack of control, that exists in everyday life. Mere ventures outside in today's urbanist projects require several scary choices. Be wary how much you spend. Be wary what happens if you don't spend enough. Be wary who may cough on you as spurts of respiratory illnesses loom. Be wary what big truck or motorcycle may miss red lights in front of you. Be wary what you look like around the wrong kind of state-protected bigot. That's all before you look at your work slash navigation slash timekeeping slash socializing slash multimedia creation and consumption device, which will surely pull you into hours of overstimulating, unproductive idle time if you've not utilized it with enough intention. Everything requires so much intention. Who has any intention left to offer away from health, from finances, or distraction? Our world has been rendered a never-ending series of demands. You are offered so many options and decisions, each of which may leave you with piles of regret and debt if mishandled. Why choose more than you need to? Why risk more than you need to? There are buttons you can press that will lighten your load. Writing is a pretentious ordeal when software exists that will write for you, and love leaves you vulnerable to lose it all, all in the name of something called spiritual growth. What is the spirit? It's a non-corporeal entity when we have no real science to verify, so everyone's got theories. Hooks writes, When I speak of the spiritual, I refer to the recognition within everyone that there is a place of mystery in our lives where forces that are beyond human desire or will alter circumstances and or guide and direct us. I call these forces divine spirit. I cannot know what love will give you. Love may give you money and fame and pleasure and travels and tales, or it may kill you. From a material standpoint, love is worthless. But what is material? What worth does material as we understand it have beyond our immediate needs? Exchange value is devilishly random and exploitative. Use value is fleeting and subjective. The only material things that seem to have objective value are things we need for survival. Mitski says that everything, including her own body, will deteriorate and go away. Possessions are ultimately subjective matters as well. 
nature or other humans can take just about anything away from you, from objects in your house to your bodily abilities to your bodily autonomy to your body. But love? Love is the only thing she truly owns. Nothing in this world belongs to me but my love. Mine, all mine, all mine. This is because love is more than just an object or even a noun. As Hux writes, The word love is most often defined as a noun, yet all the more astute theorists of love acknowledge that we would all love better if we used it as a verb. Love is an action, not an affect. It's not something you just feel or have. It's not something you can't help, some compulsory attachment to another person. This she defines more properly as cathexis. Love is something you do. It is a choice. It is your choice. It is choice itself. Most choices are contingent on others allowing us to have them. Many times, choices we justly should have are stripped away from us. But there is no real way to stop you from loving. Only you can choose who and what and when and where and why and how you love. The world pulls you up and throws you around with the vicious currents of pain and survival, but it can't make you love. It can tell you to love, but it has no means to force you. The world can give you no peace, no silence, no voice, no limbs, no time, no space, and even no love, but it cannot stop you from loving. It can speed up and slow down your heart, but it can't win your heart unless you choose to award it. How does one love? Songwriters love through writing songs. Miski says the song's idea arrived spontaneously to her. She knew she had to write it as it came to her. I bought groceries and I was walking home with groceries and it was really heavy. I don't know if you've done this, but like I had two bags in my elbows and then I was holding my hands like this. <laughs> and I tend to make up songs in my head when I really want to dissociate from the moment. I was like, my love, my love, my love. I love. And I was like singing to myself and I was like, wait a minute, this is actually good. And then once I got home, I put the groceries down and I recorded everything and I got it. <laughs> her first verse, her message to the moon, came from an experience sitting outside at night. And the moon was bright. I felt like it looked like a tent was actually covering the sky and the moon was a hole in the tent letting light in. I couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that that moon was there before I ever existed. It's gonna keep being there long after I die. And in moon years, I'm like a speck of dust floating maybe for a few seconds, completely insignificant, and then I disappear. My love, mine, all mine is all the source of moments presently experienced, noticed, and recorded with intention. It is a testament of love's basis in presence and caring action. Artists present in their lives act on them. They turn them into something beyond the material, something beyond themselves, like light from the moon, shining down onto the world as we come and go underneath. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can hit the join button and donate $5 a month, which helps a ton in terms of getting these videos done. Happy AAPI month. More videos on AAPI subjects soon. And thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Bye.